uh, I'm sorry, here it should be how to have a su uh, supernatural strength from God, okay? Now, uh, here I, I had it wrong. It should be how to have the spiritual strength from God. We think of possible ways to receive strength from God, and then we organize the ways in logical order. In logical order, we'll, we'll organize how we can have spiritual strength from God. Isaiah 40, 29, He gives power to the weak. So we trust that God has all authority and strength. He has all the authority. He has all the strength. When we love and serve Him, He will give us strength. So He will give us strength. We just trust in Him. He will help us. He will give us strength. He will help us. And then we put down our pride. We don't want to seek strength for our glory. We seek God's will and plan. So we, we humble ourselves and say, Lord, I need you. I don't have any uh, guarantee if I follow my way. Actually, uh, it will be guaranteed failure. And God doesn't like that if I trust in myself. So I say, I put down my pride. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. It's God who raises me up. So I put down my pride. And we dedicate our lives to God. So we dedicate our lives to God and say, Lord, I dedicate my life to you. Use my life. I live for God. And then we worship and love God all the time and delight in God. When God is pleased with us, then He will give us strength. So we, we worship Him and delight in, in Him. And God is good. God is wonderful. When we trust in God, we'll have more strength. And then E, when we are in difficulties, we don't lose hope. For we know that God has everything in His hands. So even when we are in difficulties, we say, God, you have the way to help me. You have the way to help me. You will help me. So I don't lose hope. I trust in you only. And you will help me. Okay? And then when we praise God and receive strength, then we thank God wholeheartedly. When we thank God with a joyful heart, we will receive more strength. So... What it says here is, when we praise God and worship Him, and then we have strength, and then we thank God. Whenever we get strength, we thank God. God, you gave me strength. Thank you, you gave me strength. And then the, when we give thanks, then we have more strength. So that's giving thanks. And then when we do anything sincerely for God, rejoice in God, for He is happy even when we give a cup of water to a little one. When we rejoice in what we do for God, we have hope and strength. So how we, can, how we can have strength in our ministry is we remember Jesus said, you know, when you give a cup of water to someone because he belongs to Jesus, then you will by no means lose your reward. So we won't lose our reward. So everything we do for God, God will remember. So I'm happy for that. I'm happy I can rejoice in God and I have strength from God. So I I don't lose hope. I don't lose strength. I, I, I rejoice that I can serve God. So whenever we do anything, we rejoice and then we have strength. And then when we serve God with His strength, we, He rewards us. He will reward us. So these are some points of how to break it down uh, so that people understand that it's not hard to have strength from God. Okay? Now I demonstrate this now just like a sermon. Instead of going through the points, you we look at a passage here, and we look at the, uh, the passage here, and then we, uh, I'll just preach from here. Okay, have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is he weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So, now, if we want to preach about this, that what I suggest the outline is like this. First, we talk about the negative and positive examples. There are Christians or even pastors who claim that they have strength from God, but they lose hope. They have problems in their life, and then they lose hope. They, they maybe they have fights in a family, that in a family they, they don't have a good family, and then they, they become unhappy, and they lose strength, and they lose hope. 
So there are negative examples. Even people, you know, who have been in a church for a long time, even some people who serve God can lose strength. So it does happen. So we need to learn how to have strength from God. Okay, and then, and then there are Christians who are put to jail for their faith, or even put to death, but they continue to trust in God and don't give up Jesus, and they, uh, they have strength because. They know that God is almighty. God will remember everything they do. So these people have good examples. Okay, so these are the negative and positive examples. And God's nature. He's a powerful God. He has no limit to His power. We can see His power in the universe. We can see His power in how He changes people. All people, all Christians, all real Christians have been changed by Jesus. Now, some people are changed to a larger extent because they obey God and have a good relationship with God. And then they are changed more. And there are Christians who don't have a good relationship with God. They, they are changed, but they, the change is not as much. Now, the difference is, you know, the point is not, the problem is not in God. It's in us. How much we trust in God. So, when we trust in God, we'll have power because He has no limit in His power. And we can see... His power in the universe, we can see His power in the lives of Christians, and he's, He has a quality, He wants to give us His strength. So this is our, His qualities. He wants to give us His strength. And then God's grace. God's grace is that He, he cares about us. He accepts us as we are. He knows that we have no strength. He knows that without Him we can do nothing. So he is happy to give us strength. He is happy to give to anyone who humbles himself and come to God and asks for help. He is very happy to give us that strength. And he would change our hearts so that we are ready. Now it's very important to talk about how God changes our heart. God will convert our heart, changes, he will change our heart so that we will trust in God, we'll love God. We'll honor God, we'll rely on God, and then we'll have more and more strength. And whenever we trust in Him, He will give us strength. And then this will in, reinforce His work. You know, that whenever we praise God and thank God for His strength, we'll receive more strength. We'll receive more power. Now, even when we are weak, even when we sin, when we forget about God, God doesn't despise us. He will continue to work in our lives he will continue to work in our lives to change us so that is a great thing about god even when we fail him he doesn't fail us he will continue to work in our heart to give us a humble heart to teach us in different ways why we should trust in god and grow in him and have strength from him and then his strength is without limit he can help us to go to a higher and higher level we can do greater and greater things where we trust in God. And then we can do great things for God. And God uh, is happy with those who trust in Him and obey Him and follow Him. God is very, very happy with us. And so we can see that, wow, God is happy with me. God wants to bless me. When I trust in Him, He will always help me. And, and even when I fail, He still moves in my heart. So if I repent, He's very happy to help me. And He wants to help me in every single way. He wants to help me so that my life will go higher and higher. His grace is sufficient. His strength is sufficient even when we are persecuted. So these are His points of His grace. Now we want to talk about how God moves in the heart. How God wants to help us. How God moves in the heart to change us so that we have faith in God. And then how He gives us spiritual strength, mental strength, and physical strength and give us wisdom. And also whenever we trust in Him and rely on Him, He will reward us. He will reward us and give us more and more strength. Okay, now why do some Christians don't have strength? Because they think that they have their own strength or they are proud of themselves. They are proud of themselves so they don't trust in God or they uh, uh, rely on themselves uh, or they look at the problem so they don't have strength, okay? So why? And then the warning, the reminder and warning. 
When people don't have strength from God, they can lose hope. They can lose their faith. They can lose their relationship with God. They can become very, very weak. So uh, that is a warning. If people don't have hope, don't, they don't have strength, they can lose strength in the Christian life and in the ministry. They can, you know, some people, I know some pastors even give up their ministry and they, and some pastors are caught in the sin and put to jail. So it can happen to anyone. Now many pastors are faithful. Now the unfaithful ones are the few. But still we want to be careful. We don't want to live in sin. We don't want to lose the strength of God. It's, then how? How can we have strength? So first we trust in God. He's the source of all strength. He's the source of all power. He can give us as much power as we need. He has unlimited power. He has so much power, we don't have to worry about anything at all. We can trust in Him totally and we'll have enough strength. And then we can look at how God has given us strength in the past. In the past, how He has given us strength and how He has given strength to some Christians. So we thank God for His work in some of these Christians. God has worked in these people's heart. And God wants to bless these people. So He wants to bless me too. God is not partial. He will bless every single person who trusts in Him. So we will trust in God and have a close relationship with God. And we put down our burdens, put down our worries, put down our weaknesses. And we ask God to help us overcome the weaknesses. No matter what the weakness is. Now some people have drug addiction and they think it's impossible to get over it. And I want to say this, uh, even people, drug addicts, when they trust in God and they pray to God, when they, you know, they, they are suffering from the addiction, they will pray to God, Lord, you are almighty, you can give me strength, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And then they can have exceeding great, exceedingly great joy that can overcome the addiction, that there are people who overcome the addiction and they become healed. So, um, so we want to think about how God has worked in our past and also work in some people and then we bring our, our problems to God. So this way I'm demonstrating how each of these points are useful, especially I want to say how to find out now the two, uh, the three most important part are God's grace, uh, nature and grace nature and grace and how. These are the most important parts. Uh, so the, the nature related to power is that He has unlimited power and He wants to give that power to us. So this is a very simple. You can just say, you know, whatever it is, God has unlimited joy. He wants to give us joy. He, he doesn't just want to keep the joy to Himself. He wants to give us His joy. He wants all His children to enjoy life. So God does His nature. And He accepts us. He has a heart of acceptance. He accepts people. So He wants to, to He knows that people don't have joy. He wants to give us joy. And then His grace. He wants to give us joy, grace, uh, joy. Now first He wants to give us joy. He, uh, he has ability to give us joy. And He will work in our heart so that we trust in Him and we have a build up a close relationship with Him and then we have joy. And then when we come close to Him, we'll receive joy. And then whenever we receive, you know, trust in Him and, and receive joy and glorify God with our joy, God is very happy and He will reward us. So these are ways how we can talk about grace. So I'm basically today is helping uh, each of you, how to talk about God's grace, how to talk about God's grace from different um, different aspects. And then I will just verbally talk about how to use this passage in a message, okay? Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove 
what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So these verses say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So Paul is motivating the Christians by the mercies of God. He's using grace to motivate the Christians. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Give your body to God. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Dedicate your body to God. That you let God, we let God use our body, our whole mind, our whole body to serve God as a living sacrifice. And this is holy. This is holy. This is set apart for God. Holy means set apart from God. So we are set apart to God and acceptable. And then when we offer a body, we will be acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. It is reasonable. It is right because God has blessed us so many ways. So it's reasonable for us to, to glorify Him and serve Him. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So do not follow the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is the good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that our mind is transformed by God, our mind is changed by God, then we may prove. Now this word in Greek can mean test, examine, approve. So we can test, we can approve what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So we can find out God's good, acceptable, and perfect will. Okay, now how, uh, so what are the uh, ne uh, negative and positive examples of people? That many people don't follow the perfect will of God. And many Christians don't follow the perfect will of God. They, they are Christians, they know about the Bible, but they think that they will seek the world. They just seek the world. I know some Christians, they just want to take care of the education of the children. They just want to prepare money for them so that they can go to university. They just want the worldly goodness of the children instead of wanting the spiritual goodness of the children. So many people seek worldly good things. They seek worldly plans instead of God's plan. So that is a problem with many, many Christians. They just seek worldly plans and then they lose the plan of God and they lose more because our plans, will, you know, we can never make it come true. And also human plan do not accomplish God's will. And then positive examples. There are Christians who dedicate their life to God and then the whole life is blessed by God. That they they bless so many people. There's Heidi Baker who went to Africa, Mozambique. She went there with very little money. That she went there and God said, I will provide for you. And then she, she, uh, God told her to take care of the orphans. And she took care of, gradually, she took care of thousands of orphans and trained them spiritually. And he built up churches and he also trained this uh, children to become pastors and they grow up to become pastors and then they they uh, bring they brought great revival in Mozambique so that's how God uses her uh, that greatly because she dedicated her life to God this is a positive example okay God's nature God is the perfect planner he can plan everything perfectly well when He created the world, everything was created in the best way. You know, you look at our body, it's wonderfully uh, created. That it's, you know, we have the brain, which is so, has so many functions that we can think clearly. We have our eyes that we can see. We have, um, we can smell, we can talk, we can sing. And we can plan, we can do so many things because God has planned our body in such a wonderful way that is uh, very functional. And God can create everything, the world, uh, the, all the creatures. He created nature in such a wonderful way that nature can sustain itself. It's only human that destroy the, the nature. God doesn't destroy nature. When God created nature, it's very 
wonderfully planned. The plan is very wonderful. And his plan of sending Jesus Christ is very, very wonderful. So these are his nature. God has the most wonderful plan and he wants this plan to come true in our lives. So that is his nature. He wants that wonderful plan to come true in our life. And then his grace. He wants to bless us. He wants us to enter his plan. He wants us to enter this plan and he works in our heart. He, he changes our heart so that we become repentant and we trust in Jesus as our Savior. We want to follow Jesus. We want to follow his plan. We want to obey him. And, and then he will give us the resource and the strength and the wisdom so that we can follow his plan. That is a wonderful thing about God. He, he wants to give us a plan and He will make it come true. He will provide for us. He will change our hearts so that we hunger for this wonderful plan. We want this wonderful plan. We want to fulfill this wonderful plan because of God's work in our lives. And He gives us all the resources, the wisdom and the opportunities so that we can fulfill God's plan. Now God has given me the, this Global Fire Missions Ministries, and He has given us a few people. Actually, a few people offer most of the offering. We are only a small mission organization, but we, it has helped me to go to mission field to 15 countries. And also, it has enabled me to help different African countries to buy equipment so that you can watch my training on, online and he has given me the wisdom to teach. So God provides for us when we trust in him. That is a wonderful thing. His plan is wonderful. He will make sure this plan comes true when we trust in him. When we, it's very simple. We offer a body as a living sacrifice. We do not be conformed, do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And then we can start to enter this wonderful plan. That is how wonderful God is. And he even when we fail Him. Now some people fail in the middle of our Christian life. Still God wants to give them a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. Man, God has given many chances to us. Even when we have failed. When we repent, we can go back to the plan of God. Now of course if we... Now there is a limit how much we fail and what we fail, uh, we can lose the most perfect plan. In order to have the most perfect plan, we need to really follow God totally. But it's not under pressure, but we say, I love God totally, I obey God totally, I just submit to God totally, I take care of my life uh, in a way that God wants me to take care of my life, and then our life can go higher and higher. And we want to guard the most perfect plan of God. The most perfect plan of God is the best. But when people fail again and again, they will lose this perfect plan. First, we lose our youth, our youthfulness, that we uh, don't have time anymore. That we can lose uh, the opportunities. We can lose the trust of people in us. We can lose the, you know, the trust of the church. We can lose uh, the favor of God, that God doesn't... Uh, you know, when a person continues to sin, they can lose the favor of God. They don't, because God sees that the person is not faithful. And then God cannot uh, give to him the best plan because he just, he will ruin it. So God cannot entrust him with the best plan. But still God wants him to go back as much as possible. When we go back to him, we will repent and follow him. He will bring us back higher up, but might not be to the best plan. So it's best that we follow the best plan and then we can, uh, we can enter this best plan. Okay, and then um, now His grace and then why um, Okay, how we can enter God's perfect plan. The way 
It's already said here. The first, we trust that God has a most perfect plan for us that wants to do the great, greatest thing in our lives and that uh, He wants to give us the perf perfect plan. He wants to, to make it come true in our lives. And then uh, it says in Romans 12, 1 to 2, present your body as a living sacrifice. So first offer our lives, that our lives belong to you. God, my life belongs to you. Please use my life. Please use my life. Please, uh, I, I want to dedicate my life to you. When, I, when you use my life, that is the best thing that can happen to me. And I don't want to conform to the world. I don't want to follow the money. I, just, I don't want to seek money as a, the, the, my goal of life. I don't want to just get the favor of people. I don't want to follow the way of the world. I want to follow the way of God. That My mind is renewed by God. My life is transformed by you. My thinking is transformed by you. My whole life is transformed by you. And, uh, and then when we obey God, when we trust God, then we start to change. We'll start to change. We'll start to have more strength. We'll have, you know, that God will see that this person is faithful. And when we help one person spiritually, God help us to help more people. When we can help one person spiritually, then we try to help two persons, three persons, four persons. We try to help more people. And when we try to help more people, that God opens our eyes, that we can do more for God. And God will speak to us. God will speak to us. You have been able to help so many people spiritually. You can help more people spiritually. So, um, I hope that we are all ascending on God's plan, that we are going to a higher plan, when we can help one person spiritually, that this person, now our goal is not to pressure people, but to let people see God is so wonderful, God is so powerful, God is full of grace and mercy and kindness and goodness, and people see that, wow, God is so good. And then they want to obey God, they want to love God, they want to serve God. And then when they serve God, they know that everything they do for God, God is very happy and God will reward them, even a cup of water. And then when they help people spiritually, God is very happy. Happy If they uh, build up spiritual the uh, strength of people, train people to serve God, God is very happy. And when they do evangelism, God is very happy. When they form a, an evangelism team, God is very happy. When they praise God wholeheartedly, God is very happy. Everything they do for God, God is very happy. And then God will help them to go higher and higher in His plan. This perfect will will discern this perfect will of God step by step. And God will give us strategy. It's very important. We need strategy. Like in fighting a war, it's not just fighting with our eyes closed, but we fight with our eyes open and seeking the best way. When we fight the spiritual war, we want to follow God's way. We want to have the wisdom of God and have the strategy of, strategy of God. What, is, what does the church need most now? Now, very important for us to examine our church. What does our church need now? What is the sit spiritual situation of the people in the church now? If the spiritual condition of the people are very weak, then we want to help them build up the spiritual strength. Help them to enjoy coming to God. Help them to get strength from God and get joy from the Lord. Help them to, to understand the goodness of God. And help them to start to serve God and say that when you do anything for God, God is very happy with you. So to, to encourage people and so the people are motivated by grace then we build up some people who are spiritually stronger. And then we can talk with these people how we can build up the church. So we can talk with these people, now, your spiritual life has been changed. Do you want the whole church to be changed like you? How can we, what can we do? How can we influence the other people? Who are some people you can influence? So we, when we help a few people, we. Give them the vision. You can help the other members of the church. So what can you do to help the other members of the church? What can we do together to help the other members of the church to build up the 
church strength so that the church will grow stronger and stronger so that is going higher up in God's plan and then when the church is all very powerful very strong then we think about how what we can do to help other churches how we can strengthen other churches not to steal people from other churches but to help other people help other churches to have a better a more efficient uh, ministry so we want to train other people to help them spiritually also then this is entering a strategy of God like now what I'm doing now I'm trying to help you all to live under grace to be motivated by God and then when we preach we want to give people how how to do it and the motivation is from grace the motivation is from grace now let me uh, go through this again so that you remember and how to find points logical points that means the points are in logical order first God's nature and grace God has the most perfect plan and he wants us to have this plan now this is his nature he has this nature he wants to share this perfect plan and he has the ability his inner nature he has the ability to help us to enter this plan okay so this first God has to have these qualities before he can help people to enter his perfect plan so he is the perfect planner he can make the best plan come true he has the resource to make the plan come true he can help us to enter his plan and then his grace he wants to give us that plan he doesn't keep it to himself he wants to give us his plan and he will change our heart so I hope you remember this it's very important change our heart so that we are suitable for God's ministry so that we can enter God's perfect plan now God's perfect plan is not necessarily mean that you have to become a minister now some people could be they have a secular job but they glorify God in the job and in the church and in the daily life so that is also the perfect plan for some people who are not in ministry not everyone is in ministry but God has a plan God wants to change his life so that he's suitable to be used by God that he can glorify people and he'll prepare the hearts of these people change the hearts so that they will want to serve God they want to glorify God and then whenever we do this he will reward us okay and then um, the now the the reason why people don't enter God's plan and uh, and the uh, and the warning they they are important but they're secondary but I, I still go through that okay the reason why because people don't think that God's plan is the best they think that they have a better plan they think that money is more important they think that it's more important that my children can earn money they they make a lot of money then they think that this is the best for them so they are using the worldly standard and also they don't have a close relationship with God so they don't they cannot enter God's perfect plan and then the warning you know when people plan we always have failure in the plan our plans are not perfect so when we plan for ourselves God is not happy with us and then we'll lose the plan <clears throat> and we'll fail our plan cannot bless us eternally so how how can we have this perfect plan as the Bible verses the Bible verses say present our body as a living sacrifice do not conform to the world but be transformed by the renewal of our mind so offer a body to God and do not follow the world but follow God's way and let God change our life and then we trust that God's plan is the best I hope that you all trust that God's plan is the best you know I trust that God's plan is the best therefore I want to do my best for God even when I can retire but I don't want to retire I don't I want to serve God longer and longer and longer I want to do more and more and so 
we want to, you know, the how is we treasure God's plan. That's the best thing that can happen to us. God's plan is the perfect plan. It's the most wonderful plan. I want to follow God's plan. I want to obey Him. I want to love Him. I want to trust Him. And then we want to find God's strategy to go higher and higher. That how can we, when we help one person, so find a strategy. The way that I've taught how to build up people's spiritual strength is to motivate them by grace. That God loves them so much. We are loved by God. And when we trust in Him, we have a close relationship with Him. God is very happy. And then when you trust in Him, He'll give you strength and He'll give you fruits and you bear fruit. And then whenever you do anything for God, God will be very happy and reward you. And so this is the motivation by grace. And then when people disobey, there will be destruction. Do you want to, be, to have destruction? If you want to have blessings, then love God, obey God, serve God, and then God will bless you and God will raise your life up. So when we can help one person's life rebuild. So I hope now, by now, you know how to rebuild the spiritual life of your church members to let them know how God is happy with them. God wants to bless them. God wants to do great things in their life. God wants to bless them. When they trust in God and obey God and love God and serve God, God is very happy with them and will, He will bless them and raise their love, life to a higher place. So we train people like that and then they say, when we can help other people to love God more, God is very happy. So we train them so that they will help other Christians to love God more. And then when they, when they help other Christians, we'll say, you are doing well. You, what you do, God is very happy with you. God will bless you because you build up their spiritual strength, which is very important. And then you, we encourage other people. And then so we say, now we've done all this thing. We are entering God's plan, step by step. And also, we want to examine the church, ask for guidance. For the church, if the condition is that there are very few devoted Christians, then we first want to help people to be devoted to God's kingdom. How to tell them if they are devoted to God's kingdom, God is happy with them and then the church will grow. Do you want to, the church to grow together with you? And then we build up more people. And then when the church has more people that are committed, then we want to um, <clears throat> expand. We want to reach out more. We want to maybe build a branch church, a sister church somewhere to expand the ministry or we want to help other churches to grow stronger so we can have different strategies when a church is stronger so i hope that this message will encourage you how to analyze the points how to have different points to support your message for god's plan his nature, so what are different points? God is a perfect planner. He wants to give us the perfect plan. He's, he will, uh, he has, he's rich so He can give us provision so that we can have the provision to enter the most perfect plan. And His grace is, He wants to give us the plan. He accepts us. He treasures us. He wants to help us to enter the perfect plan. He will give us resources. He will move in our heart to change us. It's very important to talk about this. He moves in the heart to change us so that we can uh, do greater things for Him, so that we can enter God's plan. So He changed our heart. And then when we follow Him, He is very happy and He will reward us and He will help us to go higher and higher and put down, help us to put down the, tr the trash so that we, our whole life is more pure and more dedicated to God and have more wisdom and then we can serve God better. So that's grace of God. Uh, and then the how is we dedicate our body, offer our body as a living sacrifice and not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. And also we seek the perfect will and we seek the strategy and we encourage us. Whatever we do for God, God is very happy. And so we encourage us. And then we build up other Christians together so that the whole group serve God together. 
the whole group is strengthened together. The whole group has more power. So I hope that uh, by now, you see how we can develop God's nature and grace and uh, how to enter God's plan in your messages. I hope to see you do these assignments and then I can respond to you and it will help you in your, in your ministry. When you can motivate people and people see that to follow God is not so difficult, to enter God's plan is not so difficult, to do ministry is not so difficult, to do evangelism is not so difficult, then the church will grow. And these people will enjoy God and they will enjoy your leadership. When you lead them in joy and in grace, he, the people will enjoy your leadership. They will be, will be faithful to the church and the church will have more and more strength. Okay, So God bless you and we'll have a prayer now to close. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the uh, two messages today that God, you are almighty. You have all the strength. You have all the strength that you can give to us. You are almighty. That Lord, we thank you because you are happy to give us this strength. And when we trust in you, you give us this strength. You give us continual spiritual strength. You give us strength in the Holy Spirit. And you give us wisdom. You give us motivation so that we are never tired. Lord, have mercy upon us so that we are more strength. And then when we have this strength, when we receive the strength from God, when we trust in you, we have more strength from God. We want to use it for your kingdom. And we know that you are very happy when we use uh, your, your power, your strength for your kingdom. And we want to thank you for all the strength that you have given us. And when we rejoice in your strength, then we receive more and more strength. Also, thank you for the that you have a wonderful plan in our life and you want that plan to come true and you work in our hearts so that we will want to obey you. You change our hearts so that we'll follow God's perf perfect plan. God, you are so wonderful. I want to follow you. I want to love you. I want to obey you and live out your perfect plan. Please help each of these pastors to be able to train the members so that they all desire God's perfect plan, so that they all desire to be blessed by God, so that they all desire to enter this perfect plan to bless more and more people. Lord, give us the strategic plan that we want to find the best plan for our church so that our ministry will grow stronger and stronger. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be with us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.